Alright, we're gonna like obsess over this hair for the whole time. <laughs> sure. I need a dingle hopper. Where's a dingle hopper to brush this out? <laughs> Hello, fishy friends. <laughs> it's time to talk about moi, my movie. I haven't cosplayed in a while and I felt like doing cosbound and I love Ariel, so here we are. <laughs> So hello and welcome. Let, let's get started. Obviously we're talking about The Little Mermaid today. History checks. I was created in 1989 and from that point on I have been one of the most famous princesses of the Disney Kingdom. But instead of all my glorious achievements that I've been able to achieve, we're just gonna talk about my movie. <laughs> the Little Mermaid for serious was the first princess film that basically restarted, it did restart the Disney obsession and the Disney renaissance. This was the first movie that was part of the Disney renaissance and the first princess film in 30 years. Sleeping Beauty was 1959, Ariel was 1989. So there was 30 years difference in a completely different generation, a generation that I was part of. <laughs> I wasn't born just yet, but I, when I was little, I had so many Ariel clothes, even though she wasn't my favorite princess, she was my favorite official princess. Because my favorite princess is Megara from Hercules, which I am her, and she never was an official princess. So therefore, when we're talking about official Disney princesses, Ariel is my favorite. The movie is fantastic. I'm a little biased, but it is brilliant. There is a solid plot, the characters have a ton of personality, and Sebastian is wonderful and Flounder is wonderful. See, there's talking animal characters that I love, I admire. You just have to have personality. That's what matters. It doesn't matter if you're an animal or a human or a whatnot. You just need to have personality and drive the story, and they're really likable characters. Alan Minkin did the music for this, and as we're going into the Disney Renaissance, he did the music for a lot of the films, which are iconic Disney songs. You have Literally every single song here is a hit song. Phantoms Below we open on and it just sets the mood that you're going on a sea adventure. Isn't this great? The salty sea air, the wind blowing in your face. You have part of your world. I want more. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call them? Oh. <laughs> which is the I want song which is so stereotypically now associated with archetypes and character development but it still drives the story so well and it just keeps you in that mood Under the Sea, which is a fantastic song. I say fantastic way too much, but it is. Kiss the girl. Tons and tons and tons. Every single song is a hit song, and there's even a Broadway show now with the hits. That just shows you how great it is that it launched the Broadway show. I really appreciate that this story does have a timeline when it comes to risk factors. When we talked about Sleeping Beauty, it was a very royal privilege where she's asleep, but there's no really timeline or that a risk factor. She's asleep till she gets kissed, and there's no side effects besides that. Here. Ariel sells her voice 
and has three days to get kissed by Prince Eric or else she will not be able to be on land again and that just goes every there goes away everything that she wants and what she's motivated for now listen this is important before the sun sets on the third day you've got to get dear old princey to fall in love with you that is he's got to kiss you not just any kiss the kiss of true love if he does kiss you before the sun sets on the third day, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. Ursula is a very interesting villain because of the fact that they don't mention within the film, but it is part of the Broadway show. It is part of the folklore that Ursula is related to them, that she is King Triton's sister and knowing that fact and watching that film it just brings an entire different dimension to it and the fact that Ariel is her niece it just adds this whole weird family drama situation and I wish they would mention that because it makes things a lot more uniquer she is obviously the black sheep of the family but they just treat her like she's not even a part of the family and she is. And also Hercules is my cousin. <laughs> That's another thing. Hercules and Ariel are cousins and that was a proven factor. So maybe that's why I love Hercules so much. <laughs> I do wish that we were able to see a lot more of the sisters. That is something that I was interested in learning about their life and why Ariel is the baby but yet she's the star and this is her story but at the same time I would like to see more interaction with her and her sisters. I also question why Prince Eric couldn't be turned into a merman and if how that works because at the same time I feel like towards the end it would be easier if you could visit during holidays and be able to both be a part of land and sea instead of making this giant sacrifice to just stay on land. But that's just my personal questioning of it. Um, the characters are fantastic. The story's fantastic, the music fantastic. It really holds up well even now after it's almost 30 years old. <laughs> I feel like a old person. <laughs> after 30 years it does hold up excellently and Ariel I do also think is a very good role model for kids. Yes she's feisty, yes she does what she wants, but she does it out of trying to find herself. And you have to put yourself back then. Being a teenager, of course for these little kids they're not going to know what a teenager's like, but she's that typical teenager where she's trying to figure out what she wants in her life and wants her independence and is just dealing with a lot of new emotion that she hasn't dealt with. So I think that sense is very important. I like that they covered that type of thing, that she is a part of modern society and they made a story that is a lot more modernized. and shows how life is a lot more realistic and has a lot more risk factor. They did an excellent job. Still one of my favorite films when it comes to princess films. The nice thing too is that she also had a spin-off show in 1991 and that was the prequel to The Little Mermaid and it shows how life was like before she discovered Prince Eric and I remember even waking up and watching it when it was on at 6 a.m. in the morning before DVR existed because I'm dating myself. <laughs> but that was a really enjoyable show too. I feel like the franchise of The Little Mermaid is a very enjoyable franchise and it's one of my favorites. Plus, I like mermaids. I'm a typical white girl and that's standard for sure. But I also relate to mermaids a lot and that's just something I like with the scene being by the shore growing up by the shore it was something easily relatable and being around water during the summertime is just it's it's a very relatable topic great film go watch it go see my adventures and finding my love of prince eric prince eric was one of my favorite princes too i found he was one of the more attractive ones you know i feel really bad not knowing your name <laughs> maybe i could guess we're going to continue to keep on going forward and bell from Beauty and the Beast is our next princess to discuss. So until then, as always, I hope you have a magical day and I will see you real soon.